G'day, this is Captain Noob, and this is the Modern Firearms Mod KWK 3688mm Cannon. So this bad boy right here is an anti-tank cannon, or a tank gun. So yeah, this thing was primarily used by the Germans back in the uh, World War II days, and it's the gun they mounted on their most fearsome Tiger tank. So yeah, I'm um, going back a little bit with this one, uh, really stretching the word of uh, modern there, but there you have it, you get a tank gun to carry around with this mod. And uh, let me just uh, uh, point out that it weighs 100 pounds, but uh, you can still run around with it without power armor, which is interesting. Anyway, getting into its attachments, first thing we've got here is a little bit of a uh, rounds thing. So first of all, we've got the canister. Um, this basically is a giant shotgun shell. Next up is the heat. That's just a high energy anti-tank shell there. So it'll probably do a lot of explosive damage, which is nice. Got the nukes next. This one uses the mini nukes from the uh, base game. So, um, if you're running low on the rounds that this mod actually uh, has you do, um, you can always pick up some mini nukes, which is good. And obviously, you're going to do a ton of damage with that. And last of all, not least, you've got the PZGR39. So, this is a ballistic cap shell made for armor penetrating. And yeah, it's a pretty decent one. That'll be our AP round then. And yeah, we'll leave that at canister for now, but I'll go ahead and try out all of the ammo types for that. Next up, we've got the uh, sights here. You can have an EO tech if you really wanted, but I think the best thing we can do is put a recon camera up there so we can actually feel like we're sort of using the optics. Unfortunately, it doesn't have a uh, custom little mesh or texture for that, but yeah, it's still a pretty damn decent way to look down the sights of it. Anyway, we're going to make this thing a little bit lighter now with... Uh, titanium frame with carbon body material and that'll bring it down to 50 pounds which is much more manageable if you are an actual person holding this thing so for the under rail attachments we get a tactical flashlight or just a spotlight and I think it shows up somewhere yes uh, you can just see it it's some black like there um, anyways you've also got a legendary effect on here if you feel like it I understand that never ending would be absolutely devastating on this, but we probably don't need any legendary effects to get this thing working good. Righto, into Gunners Plaza now and probably into some power armor too. Alright, so here we are in Gunners Plaza and a nice set of power armor here. So now we are not completely dwarfed by it and that definitely looks a lot better standing there in that T60 power armor. So right now we've got this thing uh, loaded with canister shell, so we'll just mess up the turret over there. Now the problem with canister shell is that uh, all of the projectiles explode and since it's firing out that many bloody uh, uh, projectiles and they're all exploding, as you can tell, it messes with the frame rate a little bit. But definitely there's a lot of damage, so that's good. I uh, will move on to something else now. We've got the AP coming up, so we'll see what we can do with that. Hopefully it's not as bad. We'll just have to see if it's got any explosive damage, which would be interesting. You're dead, says the gunner, shooting at me with a revolver. I died somehow. Okay, this time I've got AP loaded at the start. Let's see if we can kill this turret over there. Okay, we didn't die that time, and yep, that is definitely one dead turret. We'll go ahead and move on to the gunners in this room. Yep, that's them dead, and I think I blew up a turret or two. Yeah, I blew up that turret. We'll go ahead and... Uh, Okay, as it turns out, there's a lot of splash damage. A lot of, lot of splash damage. Okay, so we've established that this thing has quite a lot of splash damage, so that's probably something I should look out for. That was the canister shell again, destroying my frame rate. Let's go with the heat this time, see if we can uh, bust a few heads open with this. All right, so we'll just start. Uh, fail to get around there, and we've got all these dudes targeted with my targeting card. Frame right. Oh, I died too. Fun. Okay, last but not least, let's go with the nuke and see if that instantly kills us whilst we're trying to shoot things. So we'll just shoot that one down there. Ah, much better. That is the uh, tame Fat Man explosion. So hopefully with that, we can actually do a lot of damage to these gunners. Although I think I missed you. There we go. That's better. Now, ironically, the nuke is the most tame round here, and the Fat Man explosion uh, is a little bit, uh, I think it's a Fat Man explosion, I'm not sure, but uh, um, we're getting a lot of splash damage here, 
and the radiation is extremely high so there you go um, a fat man with its nuclear explosion puts radiation everywhere since I'm in the safety of power armor though I don't have to worry about that did I kill the person in here that is my question I think I did I think I just put radiation everywhere I don't think this place will be habitable for another 200 years anyway we'll move on from this and yep now we're slowly getting out of the radiation has this gun and oh okay that gun has died um what about these people nope these guys are out of the radiation radius so we'll just make a new one to kill everyone and uh another one down there and the radiation is ticking up slowly which is good we'll go ahead and uh shoot that one just up there just get a little bit of splash damage to kill them and what else have i got down here it looks like i've cleared it for the most part the radiation is incredibly high i mean it's raising pretty fast even in my power armor which is kind of scary yep the melee gun is dead didn't need to run up here we'll just quickly jump down don't have to do the stump there which was good and now we're slowly sleeping seeping out of that radiation range and the only one who has um gone ahead and uh survived this is obviously the turret because he's not susceptible to radiation damage so um i've just gone ahead and uh made sure the gunners won't be coming back to gunners plaza in a long time and uh I'm very glad I brought power armor and look at us just bouncing along with our big old tank gun in our hands. So, upon conclusion there, the best thing you can do to this weapon is chuck the mini nukes in it and that's convenient because you can get them in the base game. And yeah, that's the only way you can sort of do things with this weapon. We'll jump out of the power armor quickly just to see how many rads we're actually absorbing. Yeah, that's, that's heavily irradiated. So, um, okay, it went away, but, uh, interesting, you can actually sort of, um... Yeah, you can kill enemies with radiation damage rather than the explosion, which is a nice little thing to do with the mini nukes there. Usually you're just killing them with explosive damage outright, so that's a definite plus for me. I'll stop talking so we can move on to Swan and kill him. Okay, so Swan's fighting some robots over there. We'll go ahead and leave him to it. I've come out of my power on him now just to see how uh, this thing sort of dwarves you when you're holding on to it. Yeah, um, you probably should uh, be able to carry this without a outside of power armor, but um, yeah, we're wearing the Grognak costume and that makes you stronger somehow, so that explains it. Anyway, we've got, uh, we'll go ahead and test this out a couple of rounds at uh, different times so first of all we'll just uh, use the canister round and see how we go and according to this we're not going to be doing a lot of damage but we'll go ahead and crit him in the face and see how much we down in one goodbye mr swan uh, we'll go ahead and test another one now Okay, a crit to the head treatment got him last time pretty good, so uh, we'll just try that again. Again, Vat says, nah mate, you're not doing much damage with that, but we'll see. We'll see if Vat is a big fat liar. Well, looks like it was right this time. Now he's gone tumbling over in that distance, which is interesting. We'll just use this time to shoot that raider there. And with the flame animations for the reload there, we can actually see that, uh, yeah, it's a fairly decent. Um, obviously, it's probably not worth uh, getting too much animation resources to make this work properly, like actually loading a shell in. But for what it does, it's fine. And I was probably just outside of the explosion radius there. Anyway, I think the only bad guy around is Swan. So hopefully, we get a sneak attack critical with this. Wow, I just exploded two cars, I think. So, um, I'm not doing quite as good damage with this. We might as well just hit him a few times in the head. And I'd like to point out how ridiculously, um, effective this thing is AP, is uh, with just AP usage. There's no reason why you should have that many shots with this weapon. Alright, oh, you get a crit swan since you've gone ahead and mutated. And we'll just spam that crit button even more and make you tumble around and ragdoll and hopefully we can send you out of the map or something and that'll be a satisfying kill so we're getting about two grand uh per damage uh, per hit which is fairly decent but yeah i uh, can just uh next to canister shell it's not doing too much to be honest so um maybe the canister shell is ironically the highest damaging thing but obviously uh you're probably not uh 
fighting Swan with this all the time. Anything like a standard Super Mutant Behemoth will be fallen in one shot with this. And I'm he's actually too far out of range there, so I'm gonna kill you again. Just almost got him now. He's just tumbling down, getting ragdolled by the 88mm gun here. And I'm pretty sure he's further out than I could possibly move, so um, yeah. At least we don't have to smell him this time. That was a uh, pretty decent kill. We'll go ahead and check out the heat round then. Okay, while well, Swan is distracted all on all the Rust Devils, we'll just get a cheeky little crit heat to his face and see what we can do. Oh, look at all those things. Is that a firework explosion? Whoa, okay. That's what happens when you shoot a heat round. They just create millions and millions of explosions and it destroys your frame rate. Look away, look away, look away. If you can't see the explosions, they can't ruin your frame rate. They're still going? Okay. That was interesting. Um, if you want to have your computer or console stay intact and not have the engine destroy itself and crash, don't use this one. But you know what? It does a lot of damage, so it makes it fun. Last test we'll do is just with the nukes and see how fast we can drop him now. Okay, I've got the nukes loaded in this time. Let's go ahead and shoot Swan and see what we can do. So right off the bat there, it's almost about 5,000 damage on him, which is a lot better than the AP, which means we'll be able to kill him a lot quicker. Now, unfortunately, um, we are going to have to stay our distance a little bit because obviously this thing spits radiation and that was a really stupid decision to shoot that guy who was that close to me. So we'll just go ahead and shoot Swan and try to backpedal a little bit. And there's the reload in first person, the good old flamer, uh, third person I should say, the good old flamer reload. And we'll scope in and shoot him and then come out of the radiation a little bit, hopefully. I might have to do a Radix here in a second, but uh, yeah, looks like the most dangerous thing to both me and Swan is this weapon in my hands right now, which is kind of weird. We'll go ahead and keep on shooting him. Oh, we've got 800 damage, 8,000 damage there. He's still there. We'll go ahead and um, move forward and see if we can't get a health. Okay, he's almost dead, so let's go ahead and shoot him in the face there. 10,000 damage, excellent. So he's almost dead. We'll definitely uh, not drop of radiation poisoning before killing Swan, hopefully. So one last shot to do him in. Goodbye, Swan. I'm going to get out of here before I turn myself into a ghoul. Oh man, she's mad about all this radiation. I would probably be mad too. Okay, back to the canister shell. And now uh, you know what? We'll uh, finish off these bloody Myler dudes, the giant lobsters, and we'll call it a video. Oh, there's another one there. Watch out for him. He'll, he'll get you, alright? So even though we do have less than 20% health left, uh, we're pretty much fine to kill these guys without any troubles. Even at top tier, I don't find the uh, things... Oh! Yeah, watch out for that. You can kill yourself rather easy with that. But you know what? I think that should just about be enough for this thing. Um, we're going to leave Swan alone. We're just going to jump back in our power armor and run. Um, it's worth mentioning that uh, if you're walking around normally, you get a massive movement penalty, which makes sense. But if you sprint, that's the same speed as you would sprint. So you, you can haul ass and carry this thing pretty far and pretty fast if you've got the good sprint, uh, high endurance, and I think uh, the, the moving target, rank 3, which... Uh, decreases sprint cost by 50%. You can sprint forever with this and go really far, which is some sort of uh, thing that is not realistic. But there you have it. I think that is a good enough time to end. That was the anti-tank gun, part of the modern weapons mod. Um, emphasis on modern that. You know what? You can put it away. It's probably a little bit heavy for you. So if you'd like to see this weapon in your game, be sure to check out that description. There shall be a link down there. And uh, yeah, thank you for watching, guys.